Hello everyone, Shane here. I'm going to set up a grid with you in InDesign and I'm going to do a couple of brief videos about this um, because I, well we all do here at the Diploma in the Design Department, we believe that grids are a crucial tool to creating order in any um, designed document. Uh, even down to something as small as a business card. I, I believe it's really good to work with some kind of grid or structure. A grid is a skeleton, perhaps, to flesh out your design upon. Something you don't immediately see, but you recognize is there. It's like you can't see my bones, but you know they're underlying my flesh. And a, a grid gives allows for the body, let's say, of a design document to be orderly to be um, consistent and to be, if you wish, to be precise. Grids have been used in design, well, before we even had the discipline of design, when there were book designers or bookmakers, grids were used, um, you know, four or five hundred years ago. Uh, not the same way now, of course, we didn't have software to help us, but they were intentionally designed and set, they were thought about, and there was quite a lot of art put into the creation of books. Okay, so I'll simply create a new file from here. And you go up here to the presets and hit on print. In this case, I'm going to do a print booklet. And over here to A4, that's be my preset, because I, that was the last one I did. And I'll type here the name, let's call it test grid number one column and as you can see the measurement system is millimeters we can change that at any time but I'll stick with millimeters for now my orientation will be vertical and I will have facing pages ticked now I'm not going to set my columns here or my margins I'm going to leave those at the default but I will add a three millimeter bleed so in this book on virtually every page you can see there's print running off the edge. Down here, the photograph. There's a color in the top left here. So every element that runs off the edge of a page requires the use of bleed in the document setup. So hit on create. Now, we're inside InDesign. If I toggle my tab key on and off, we'll hide and show the toolbars. And if I use Command R or Control R on a PC, I'll hide and show the rulers. So I want my rulers on. And if I open my Pages um, panel, firstly, perhaps just make sure you're inside a workspace of typography. That workspace will allow you to access all the really important tool panels that you need. Click on Pages, and you'll be inside the single page document. Now, if you come down here to the bottom, Create New Page, you can add as many pages as you wish, which is great. You hit Z to zoom, click and drag, and you can see there's our basic margin. This red line here is our bleed line. These magenta lines are our margins. Let's have a chat about margins. A lot of students, before they really understand the value uh, of a grid, will just use the default margin, or perhaps even not even use it, but just allow it to be there. So the good thing about grids is, um, well, the important thing about grids is once you set them up, you really should follow them. And you should set up a grid that's useful to you and keep modifying the grid according to your needs. So we're going to now go up into the Master Pages section. So if you double click inside the little thumbnails up here next to the letters A and the word Master, hold down my Shift key, click on the second thumbnail, you'll see now that I've got both double page spreads um, selected. So go up to layout, margins and columns and input settings for the top, bottom, inside and outside and ensuring that preview is turned on as you adjust the settings you'll see them adjust on screen. Very handy. Perfect. Now columns, one, two, three and we've got a three column grid which is what I'd like to begin with. By the way, if you ever wish to change a measurement 
and the preset of that file is currently in let's say millimeters but you wish to use points or it's in centimeters and you wish to use pikers you just type in and add the number and add the letters PT for point or P for pica and that will oops um, I shouldn't have hit let's try that again select all 12 or let's say 10 point 10 PT hit tab is 3.528 millimeters so there you go okay so let's um, come out of there now we've got a nice little simple grid now what I'd like to do is add some uh, horizontal guides and some vertical guides. So notice this, if you go up into the ruler and click and drag, you'll get a guide. Now I just went up into the left, above the left hand page and the guide stretches only to the full width of that page. However, let's undo that. If I come outside the area of the page layout and click and drag, my ruler stretches across the entire double page spread. And that just saves saves a click, doesn't it? I'm going to click and drag outside again and bring one right down to the bottom of my margin area. And I'm going to click and drag another one and I'm going to create another line somewhere here where I'm going to put, perhaps I'll start most of my photographs or most of my body text. It might start about here somewhere. It's called a hanging line. Click and drag another one and I'm going to put one down here for the page numbers. Now I'm going to click and drag from the left. I'm going to put a vertical in about there for my page numbers, horizontal one here for my whatever, my edge of, um, perhaps I'll put some other graphic elements in there. It's just good to have a few lines ready to go and I might just drop another one in down here for perhaps the bottom of my, say my major photographs. And that's looking pretty good. I might even put another one here for, there might be something else I'll use. So as you can see now, if I just turn that, close that, and hit W, they're all invisible. So that's the thing about guides. They're there, but you can't see them. So W again, by the way, W simply toggles between preview view and normal view. 